Mungiri Lal has two investment plans A and B to choose from. Plan A offers interest of 10% compounded annually. Okay. While well, Plan B offers simple interest of 12% per annum. Okay. Well, how many years is Plan B a better investment? So we have A and we have B over here. Um, simple interest over here at 12% per annum. And we have compound interest at 10% per annum. Right. So it's quite simple over here. Um, what's the principle going to be? Right. In both the cases, it's going to be 1, let's say. Or let's take it as 100, right? Let's make life a little easy. Now, what's going to be the amount at the end of year one, right? It's going to be 110, um, 121, 133.1, 146.41, and so on, right? Amount at the end of second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year. We'll come to that. Uh, what about B over here? Every year it's 12%. 12% 12 is 12 rupees, so 112. Uh, 124, uh, 136, 148, uh, 160. Okay, till how many years is plan B a better investment? Right, till how many years? It's better, it's better, it's better, it's better. Oh, we have to check for the fifth year as well. Uh, what is this going to be? I need to increase this by 10%. 10% of 146.41 is 14.641. And what are we going to get? 146 plus 14 is 160 for sure. 161 point something. Here it's the other way around. A5 is going to be plan A becomes a better investment. Till how many years? Till four years, till A4, right? Option two is the answer here. A man borrows 6,000 at 5% interest on reducing balance at the start of the year. He repays rupees 1,200 at the end of each year. Find the amount of loan outstanding in rupees at the beginning of the third year. Beginning of the third, for two years alone, we have to do. Okay, so this is from uh, a ZAD paper and ZAD and other exams. You don't even have the calculator. Right, probably a test of that. So, 5% uh, interest on reducing balance, right? Uh, end of first year, what is happening over here? This is the principal, right, or borrowing. 5% uh, interest on this. 5% is nothing but 1 by 20, right? 1 by 20 of this is 300. We have to add the interest for the first year, subtract the repayment at the end of the first year, right? What is that going to be? Uh, repayment is given as 1200. Uh, so, um, plus and minus uh, we're going to get 6000 minus 900 which comes to 5100 right that's the amount at the end of one year and what's going to happen now uh, we're going to have uh, again an interest being added for the second year that's 1 by 20 of this uh, 1 by 2 of 510 half of 510 is 255 i'll write that below one we get 5355 but i have to subtract a repayment which has happened and that is 1200 right add this and subtract this 5355 minus 1200 is 4155 and this is the amount at the end of second year what's asked is at the beginning of the third year amount at the end of second year a2 is the same as the amount at the beginning of the third year so 4155 is the answer option 3 is the answer for this question mr mera is planning for higher education expenses of his two sons aged 15 and 12 he plans to divide rupees 15 lakhs in two equal parts and invest in two different plans. 15 lakhs is split as 7.5 and 7.5, okay? Two equal parts and invest in two different plans is that his sons may have access to 21 lakhs. So 7.5 is going to become 21, right? For each of them when they reach the age of 21. That is six more years over here, right? Six more years. He's looking for a plan that will give him simple interest, right? He's happy with simple interest. Six more years over here. Principal plus the interest should come to 21, right? It's not only the interest. They should amount to, right? They should amount to this. They should have access to 21 lakhs after investing this much. So principal plus the simple interest. What's the simple interest formula? PNR by 100, 7.5 into. For this sum, let's say, is going to be six years, six by 100. Uh, sorry, 6 is 6 years, which is n into um, r by 100, r by 100. Um, so this is going to be the elder son, which is the second one we are going to find, okay? What do we see in the options? All of them are different, right? Any one of them, if you find that's enough, you can answer. Uh, so 7.5, if I take to the other side, I'm going to get a 13.5, right? I can write it as 75 into 6 into r by 100. That is, if I multiply this with 10, I'm going to get a 
135 by multiplying this also with 10. Um, so divide by 15, we're going to get a 9 and a 5 here. Um, 6 if I divide by 3, um, I'm going to get 3 here and 2 here. 5 2s are 10, cancels and R over here is 10 into 3 comes to 30. 30% 30 for the elder son, yeah, is the only one which has it. Option 5 by 4 is the answer. If you wish, you can try the same over here. Here it's going to be 7.5 into this time around there are 9 years, 12 to 21, right? The younger son, 9 years at um, some rate, let's call it R2 by 100 equals 21. Solve for this and you should get 20% here. In the beginning of the year 2004, a person invests some amount in a bank. In the beginning of 2007, the accumulated interest is 10,000. Okay. In three years, right, my principal over here in 2004, the principal which is going in over here is generating an interest, accumulated interest, that is 2004 to 7, right? That's a three year period. I'm getting uh, interest over here of how much? 10,000, right? Although it's accumulated over a three year period, it's continuing. See, the accumulated interest becomes 25,000 in the beginning of 2010, right? That means over the next three year period, right? Next three year period, it's 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 going to become 25,000. There's already 10,000 and now it's becoming 25,000 the total, right? Understand this very clearly. Um, 10,000 was only on the principal. You can take it that way, right? 10,000 was only on the principal, all right? The same 10,000 should come over here as well, interest on principal, right? But what's happening? We're getting an additional 5,000 over here. What is this additional 5,000? Where is it coming from? What's the logic? This additional 5,000 is a result of, first off, we had 10,000 only at the start. I mean, the first three-year period, total of six years all put together, right? The accumulated interest was 25. I'm splitting this 25 as, if it were only simple interest, it would have been 10K here, and another 10K over here, 10,000 here, right? As it is compound interest, we're getting extra 5,000. And this extra 5,000 is nothing but interest on interest earned in the prior period. I can make a direct comparison over here because this is a three year period and this is also a three year period, right? And how much is this 5,000 interest on interest? What, what is the interest of for a three year period on this 10,000, which is giving me 5,000? 5,000 is 50% of this, right? 5,000 is 50% of this. 50% for a three year period is the interest on interest. The interest on interest is the same as the rate of interest. That means for every three years, this fund or whatever it is, is getting 50% return. That means for the first three year period where I got 10,000, that is also going to be a 50% return. 50% of what is 10,000 for me? Half of what is 10,000 for me? Half of 20,000 is 10,000 for me. That's it. You answer the question this way. Now, the other way to do it is going to be. Uh, P into 1 plus R by 100, whole cube minus principal is 10,000, which is right as 10 for now. And the other is going to be P into 1 plus R by 100, whole power 6 minus P is going to be 25, right? 25,000 or 25. Now we can take a P common outside and divide. If you're dividing these two, what, what is it that we're getting over here? Uh, P is cancelled and we get a 1 plus R by 100 whole cube minus 1. We can just write let let 1 plus r by 100 whole cube be equal to y or something like that, right? So we get p into y minus 1 divided by, take a p common and you get y square minus 1 equals 10 by 25, which is 2 by 5, right? So you can cancel these two and then we get a um, 5y minus 5 equals 2y square minus 2 and you can merge them and write it as 2y square minus 5y. Bring the minus 5 here, you get a plus 3 equals 0. Uh, you solve for this, you can split it as minus 6, uh, or rather minus 3 and minus 2. Right, uh, minus 2, sorry. You change the signs and divide by 2. Right, this is what we have seen in the, um, in the um, quadratic lesson. Right, this is how you can quickly get it in one step. Now, y can be 3 by 2 or 2 by 2. Now, if it is going to be 2 by 2, that's 1. 
the multiplication factor is 1 everywhere, we get P minus P that becomes 0, right? So, it can't be the answer. Therefore, it has to be 3 by 2 or 2. Y is nothing but 3 by 2 or 1.5. Now, um, we can plug this back over here, right? We know Y is 1.5. We can plug into this first bit, first equation. Um, P into Y minus 1 equals 10 and Y is nothing but 1.5. Uh, p into 1.5 minus 1, which is 0.5 equals 10, which is half and take it there and you get p equals 20. But I didn't write the thousands, so add three zeros over here and you get 20,000, right? This is a longer way of doing it. If you understand it conceptually, you'll be able to get the answer a lot quicker, right? The previous method is a lot quicker than this one. A computer is sold either for 19,200 cash or rupees 4,800 cash down payment together with five equal monthly installments. Okay, so you either pay 19,200 or you pay 4,800 immediately along with five equated monthly installments. Uh, if the rate of interest charge is 12% per annum, but pay monthly installments 12 by 12, 1% per month. Okay, then the amount of each installment is nearest to a rupee of what? X divided by 1.01 .01 plus X divided by 1.01 .01 square, right? So if you want to write it down, you can always do that. Uh, but this is an examination where there is no calculator, right? Uh, what are you going to do if something like this is going to turn up? How do you solve for x? You take an x and you apply the uh, formula over here, sum to n terms of a GP, and um, you take this 4,800 to the other side, you're going to get a 14,400 once you subtract um, and you solve for x, right? It's a, it's, it's a painful affair. Um, how do you uh, do it a lot quicker? Right, is 1.01 to the power 5 very important? And right. so let's look at it. Um, the options seem to be very close, no doubt, right? But yet they're quite far apart, right? Let's look at it. Um, you can use a sort of approximation. I'm not saying that will always turn out to be true, but in a paper like this, you can't be trying to find the exact value by dividing without a calculator. If you had a calculator, you can apply the GP formula and uh, get it, right? If you don't have it, what do we do? Uh, look at it this way, right? 14,400 is what you have to get from these five uh, monthly installments, right? If let us say there was no rate of interest, right? There's no rate of interest. How much would you pay each month, right? EMI without interest equals 14,400 divided by five and that is coming to 2,880, right? Which is given over here. But you definitely have some interest. So therefore, this can't be the answer. It has to be more than this. As there is interest, we have to pay um, more, right? Because we have borrowed, we have to pay more. We can't just return the principal. We have to give it interest. Now, how much extra, right? Is the question. How much extra is it going to be? This uh, 14,400 is becoming a zero over time. Treat it as simple interest, right? If it's simple interest, just look at it. How much are we getting under simple interest? What is the average outstanding? We are getting 1% for the first payment, 2%, right? For two, two time periods, 1% for each, 2% for the next one, 3% for the next one. We have five time periods, right? N equals 1, end of the first month, end of second month, and so on till the fifth month, right? So five payments being made over here, 2880 plus something each time. Now, 1 to 5, right? Um, how much is it going to be? If it's simple interest, it's going to be one person for the first, right? Which is which, which has not been paid. Now the last payment, which is there, I have to pay around five percent, right? One once again, one point zero one power five. I'm not looking at it that way. I don't need to find that value. It's a very small percentage. So even if you compound it, it's going to be very close to five percent. So take it as two person, three person, four person, five percent. Under simple interest, um, it is totaling to around fifteen percent. Right, 15% of 2880. Each one, 2880 into 1%, 2880 into 2%, and so on, and all of that. 15% over here it comes to what is 15% of 2880? Right, what is that going to be? 15 by 100 into 2880. Right, one zero is cancelled over here. Divide by 5 and you get, okay, and here you get a 144. 144 into 3. Is coming to 420 plus 12, which is 432. Divide this 432 over 
five time periods, right? Uh, five installments over here. This is the overall interest, approximate interest under simple interest, right? Not compound, but compounding is what we have to apply over here. 432 by 5 is coming to 86.4, right? Each month it has to be about 86.4 more. Just add this up and see as to what you're kidding, right? This is coming to 2966.4. Now that is under a simple interest with uh, uh, declining balance, right? And the compound interest with declining balance, the other way around, it should be a little, right? Close to this, but a little away, right? Uh, more likely to be a little less because it is declining right now, not the other way around. So uh, whether you know that it's less or more or whatever it is, just look for the value which is closest which we have for 2966.4. Here we have 2965. That becomes the answer, right? Just go through this logic once again. Took a lot of time to explain this. But once it's clear, you'd be pretty quick with solving this. In the exam, if you have this, 19200 minus 4800 should be 14400, right? Uh, I have one person per month for five months, right? Five monthly um, EMI. Simple interest is going to be one percent, two percent, and so on till five percent. If I add all of them up, it's fifteen percent. Now, what is fifteen percent? Uh, fifteen by hundred into how much? Two eight eight zero. Right, 2880 over there. Now, this has to be split over a five time period. So, one fifth of this 14400 you can take as one fifth. The principal part, one fifth is 2880. The interest portion, approximate interest portion, right? Uh, what are we going to get over here? Uh, 3 into 288 um, comes to 864. 0 is cancelled. So, 86.4. And you'll get the answer is uh, 29. Uh, 66.4 close to that and you get option two. These would be your workings if you're clear with this concept. Mohan has some money that he divides in the ratio one is to two. He then deposits the smaller amount in a savings scheme that offers a certain rate of interest. The larger amount in another savings scheme that offers half of that rate of interest. Okay. Okay. So we have um, right. Okay. One is to two. Um, let's write down let's take some short notes over here it's a long question right uh, how do we do this uh, this is a long part over here okay we'll write it below it um we have scheme one and we have scheme two right uh what is the principal portion over here what do we know about it um one is to two ratio so if it's p over here it's two p okay he then deposits the smaller amount in a savings scheme that offers a certain rate of interest, a large amount, another scheme that's offering half the rate of interest, half of this. So if this is 2R, this is going to be R, okay. Rate of interest, okay. And uh, both interests compound yearly, right. Uh, annual compounding, so it's compound interest. Uh, at the end of two years, the total interest earned from two savings schemes is 830. 830 rupees is what we are earning over here. Um, good. It is known that one of the interest rates is 10 percent. That's also gifted. So we are told that one of them is 10 percent. Uh, which one is 10 percent? We don't know. Either this could be 10 percent, which means this becomes 5 percent, right? Half of that. Or if this is 10 percent, this becomes uh, two times that becomes 20 percent. Okay. Two scenarios over here. And um, Mohan deposited more than 1000 in each saving scheme. More than 1000 in each saving scheme. And we also know that you're going to get 830 over here as a combination, right? Uh, combined, both combined over a two year period. Now, 20% and 10% are the easier numbers over here to work with, right? 20% compounded for two years is going to be 1.2 square into P. That's the amount, right? Uh, P into 1.2 square and then you have 10% uh, for 2 years and that's going to come to 2P into 1.1 square. Now what we are given is just the interest earned or nothing else, right? So at this stage I need you to get comfortable. 20% for 2 years, 1.2 square is 1.44. 1.44 on 1.44 your interest is just 0.44, right? 44% interest. 20% plus 20% of next year plus interest on interest of 4% or look at it this way. 
principal into 1.2 square that's 1.44 p if that's the amount ignore the one 0.44 is the interest 44 percent is the interest so the interest on the first deposit under this scenario over here right 20 percent 10 percent it's 0.44 p interest on the second deposit all right for 10 percent is 1.21 that is 21 percent right you should, you should get familiar with these numbers now some of these two is coming to 830 uh, 0.44 plus 0.42 if you multiply right the sum total of these two the interest portion alone is um, 0.86p um, equals 830 which means p is coming to 830 by 0.86 830 double zero by 86 right is, is nothing but 1000 into 83 by 86 if one of the principles is going to be 1000 into a number less than one this over here is less than thousand but what's given over here Mohan deposited more than thousand in each savings scheme definitely it's more than thousand in both the saving schemes uh, right so it can't be this this is not allowed this is this is not fine it's definitely going to be ten percent and five percent over here so now we're gonna get a twenty one percent interest over here right one point one square of p 1.21p i'm not writing a lot of them down i'm saying it because that should be running in your mind for small values you should have a sense in two years how much the compound interest is going to be only the interest portion 1.1 square is 1.21 so that's 21 percent interest right after the decimal point 21 21 percent of p which is 0.21p plus five percent compound interest is five plus 5 5.25 10.25 0.1025 but this time around for 2p right equals 830 what is 0.1025 into 2 um, you double 1025 you get 2050 so it's 0.205 you add these two you're going to get a 0.415p equals 830 right and if i want to multiply both sides with 1000 i'm going to get 415p equals 830 into 1000 830 you can divide over here and you get a 2 so p equals 2000 that's it so p is 2000 and 2p over here is 4000 and we are done the answer is option 5 6000 start a new enterprise mr yogesh had borrowed a total of rupees 60000 from two money lenders with the interest being compounded annually to be repaid at the end of two years okay 60000 from two people so yogesh repaid 38800 more to the first money lender compared to the second money lender at the end of two years okay fine we don't know the rate of interest the first money lender charged an interest which was 10 percent more than what was charged by the second money lender okay first person is 10 percent more than the other that's good if mr yogesh had instead borrowed 30,000 from each at their respective initial rates for two years 30,000 from each equal amounts for two years respective rates okay here also end of two years only okay fine um then you would have paid 7500 more to the first money lender that is only because of the interest rate difference right so 30000 into what is it going to be the amount at the end of two years the first money lender let's take that to be r um r plus 0.1 right 10 percent more the second money lender is only r i'm writing these rates as a portion or decimal instead of a fraction not in percentage terms if it's five percent it's five by hundred point zero five like that ten percent is point one point one more than r r in the decimal form so thirty thousand into one plus the multiplication factor it's already in the decimal form i don't need to divide by hundred again whole square right um minus uh, here it's more how much more seven thousand five hundred more compared to 30,000 into 1 plus just R for the second money lender, right? 1 plus R whole square equals 7,500, right? 7,500. I can take a 30,000 common outside and divide, right? With 7,500, and I'm getting a 4 over here across. So I'm getting 4 times uh, 1 plus R plus 0.1 is 1.1 plus R, right? Within the bracket, we're going to get 1.1 plus r the whole square what is that going to be 1.21 plus r square plus 2 times 1.1 times r which is 2.2 r 
minus what are we going to get when we expand this 1 minus r square minus 2r equals 1 that's it so bring the 4 there and we're going to get a 0.25 right 1 by 4 and what happens here r square is cancelled uh, 1.21 minus 1 is 0 0.21 2.2 r minus 2 r is plus 0.2 r um, yeah so if we take this to the other side we're going to get r equals 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.2 you can multiply and divide by 100. What do we get? 4 by uh, 20, which comes to um, point 0.2. So point 0.2 is what is R in the decimal form, right? Which means R is nothing but, if R is point 0.2, it's nothing but 20%, right? 20% is what becomes 20 by 100, which becomes point 0.2. Right? So it's fine. So we know this is point 0.2 and the other is going to be point 0.3. That's all we need to note over here. So we know the first money lender is going to be 0 0.3, 10% more than the second money lender who's charging an interest rate over here is uh, 0.2, okay? And this over here is 0 0.3. Now, what do we know about um, the amount over here, right? Between the two of them, uh, your, uh, Yogesh is paying 38,800 more to the first person who's charging extra as well, right? What is the amount to the first money lender going to be? That is whatever has been borrowed into 1.3 square, 1.3 whole square, 1 plus 30%, 30 by 100 or 0.3 whole square. And we know that, right? We know that that's 1.69, right? What's the amount to the second money lender over here going to be? Whatever the remaining portion, 60,000 minus the remaining into 1.2 the whole square, which is 1.44, right? We need to find these two values and subtract them. Now, a few things for you to remember over here. We have two decimal places over here, two decimal places. So I need to have, I need to have at least two zeros, right? At least two zeros over here because my final value is 38,800 after finding out these and subtracting them, right? I'm getting 38,800 after finding these and subtracting them, right? Now, that means what? Most likely there are going to be two zeros over here after multiplying with 1.69. Okay, so let's put it this way. So some number into 1.69 should end with two zeros. So if it has to end with two zeros, definitely has two zeros. And if there are two decimal places over here, there need to be extra two zeros over here, right? Only then will two zeros get knocked off with the two decimals and two zeros remain at the end. And I subtract and I get these. These are the observations you have to make. You can't be trying to prove it or find the exact value or forming long quadratic equations and trying to solve them. Okay, purpose of this exam is not that. It's for you to make these observations. Now, what is going to end with four zeros over here in the answer options? Um, would I go for option one or option three? Where would I want to start? I prefer option three because A1 is going to be, what is asked for you? How much money did? Uh, the money borrowed by Yogesh from the first money lender is how much? First money lender is where? It's going to be a huge amount. Difference is 38,800. It's going to be higher than 30,000. When it was equal 30,000, it was only 7,500 difference. For you to have 38,800, a huge difference, the first money lender should be more. What if it's 40,000, right? What if it's 40,000? The second one is going to be only 20,000. You can be reasonably certain that this is going to be the answer and keep moving. Or if you want to be doubly, triply sure. 4 into 169, 4 into 160 is 640, and then a 36, 676, 676, double zero, 2 into 144 is 288. Subtract these two, and you should get 388, 38800. Option 3 becomes the answer here.